everyone and welcome to New to HR and our webinar series. My name is Nicole Dominique Lemaire and I'm the founder of New to HR. Today we'll be looking at the myths of HR business partners. Before introducing you to our guest speaker, which I'm we're very excited about, I'll just introduce you a little bit about how we work and the housekeeping rules during this webinar. On the right hand side you'll see a chat function, a sidebar in which you can type and you can answer questions, you can share any details that you would like to share with our guest speaker. I'll introduce the guest speaker to you now, our wonderful Alan Shevat. He's a bit of a mystery man. Um, he's a world-class OD consultant specializing in acute diversity, complex organizational change across many geographical borders and uh, working and adapting to global environments and really postmodern organizations. He works with very small and very large Fortune 500 companies. Now he's also the author of Gloria Ramsbottom, and I always pronounce this wrong, Les Mieux, uh, the satire blog, satiric blog I should say, as well as the author of a widely read blog on OD. So he'll share with you his contact details as well, but we'll be learning a lot more about the actual myth of the HR business partner and it should be very exciting. So and no further ado, I'll introduce you and hand you over to Ellen. Okay. Okay, so uh, thank you, Nicole. And um, today I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, the uh, death trap um, of HR uh, business partnership. Um, uh, we can call it a myth, but I, I prefer to call it a death trap. Uh, basically, um, the goal of the presentation is to explain to you um, what happened uh, that HR started calling itself business partner, um, what happened when HR started believing it was a business partner, and what we need to do to get um, out of that rut, basically. So, just a few, um, uh, just a few uh, uh, words about myself. Um, you have my contract, uh, uh, my contact information on the um, on the slide, um, which you're going to be seeing, um, and uh, you have uh, a, a whole page about me, um, which Nicole has uh, already presented. Uh, you'll notice that. Um, uh, there's two links. You can click on the link and you can um, look at my blog directly. So, so let's let's um, let's start looking at um, what happened um, to HR's uh, functionality and um, what happened to the the business partner um, uh, myth that we fell into. So, first of all, a lot of um, functionality of, of HR has been eaten away. Uh, it's been eaten away by IT. It's been eaten away by legal. It's by eaten away by social media. And in many cases, uh, we see uh, HR uh, reduced um, to administration, to procedures, to compliance, um, and uh, and even uh, even worse uh, than compliance. It's um, uh, basically a um, it's a a police a police function, and uh, HR's response uh, to the loss of uh, Nicole. Can you move the slide forward one one please? Yeah, no, one more. That's it. So let's let's uh, let me restate what I said that um, that we have a loss of functionality to IT to legal to social media. Um, HR is basically dealing a lot of procedures, minor compliance issues, and because of that, uh, the HR business partnership was formed. Um, the basic uh, uh, the basic premise that I have is as HR was losing a lot of its functionality, it went and jumped into bed, as it were, um, with the with the term uh, business partnership. Let's go one more forward. Okay, so what is this HR business partnership? Well, basically, what was the promise? Well, the promise was that HR would understand the business, 
an HR would think business, and we'd be able to measure everything uh, like people uh, in business do, and we'd I would be able to provide tools and processes um, uh, to to uh, efficient to to uh, drive more efficient utilization of the human resource. <clears throat> we'd be able to improve the ROI on uh, human asset management, and basically we would take the HR um, function and both drive business, understand business, and we'd all, almost be a business. In other words, we would manage the human resource pretty much like supply chain manages spare parts with the only difference is that HR is dealing with people, okay? And this was supposed to take the huge loss which HR incurred to IT, to legal, um, to uh, social media, and compensate um, be, uh, by by uh, by more proximity to the business function. Now, what was born there was not only um, not only uh, not the promise, but what was conceived was, in my mind, is a disaster. So, because we're so aligned to business. Uh, so what do we, uh, clearly the first thing that we do is we become the hatchet man or the hatchet woman of the CEO. And if we have to chop, we chop. Why? Because we understand business. Okay? And you have to chop twice, choppy, choppy. You do choppy, choppy. And uh, you come close to the CEO. What does that mean? You can't be trusted. You can't be trusted and you're dealing with choppy, choppy. Uh, no one really likes the function. There's even been movies about how much people hate, dislike, or mistrust HR. And um, in the end, HR really, um, really never got the business right. Um, it basically divested itself from people, and HR became a very marginalized function. In other words, the business people never look at HR and say, you're my business partner. No, 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 HR calls itself a business partner, and it's all on the business cards, but it's not real. And the people really don't trust HR anymore because we're business partners. And there's a huge um, contradiction between um, how people see their well-being and the well-being of an organization. So basically, having lost a whole amount of functionality, okay, we jumped into bed to find ourselves as business partners. Um, the CEOs don't see us as business partners. And the workers or the employees or the nerds or the geeks, they look at us and say, hey, you guys can't be trusted. You're an axe man or an axe woman. And that basically leads me to what you see at the bottom of the uh, slide in which you have a, an HR manager in French au poteau, you know, on the, on the hanging block. So let's go to the next slide. And um, in the next slide, um, uh, 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 you can see here my, my character of Gloria Ramsbottom, who basically uh, uh, becomes a business partner and starts um, developing business partnership. Uh, and the, in the link you'll see, she, uh, char she unbundles her services and, for example, charges um, the CEO um, or the each person she acts at uh, Firing by text, two dollars a head. So basically, if you take look at this and you reduce it to absurdum, okay, which in many cases uh, is is what happens. Sadly, <coughs> you see that that HR uh, uh, as a business partner is uh, is really comical. Okay, let's go, and I invite you all to to read about Gloria and her business partnership. Let's go to the next slide, and in the next slide um, we can see. Um, I want to ask a question, which is, which I think is a very important question, and that is, why does finance not define themselves as, well, I'm the finance business partner, and why does the legal guy not come on and say, well, you know, I'm the legal business partner, but on the other hand, the HR person comes on and says, you know what, I'm the HR business partner. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Well, I'll tell you the way that I see it. You know, someone can say, well, 
HR is not really about business, so they've got to define themselves as business partners. That's not true. Finance, um, a lot of times stalls, uh, very conservative. They don't support a lot of investments, and yet they call themselves finance and not finance business partners. Um, nothing like dealing a lawyer for him to bog you down and not be able to do anything. So he's not really running along um, with the CEO either. But the finance and legal guys don't define themselves as business partners. The finance says, look, I deal with the numbers. And the legal side, look, I deal with covering your ass so we don't get sued. So why is it that the HR person, okay, doesn't say, I deal with people, okay, and, and that's my specialty. Um, and, and, I, and, and I think that the, the, the answer to this question is in the next slide. So let's jump to the next slide. And the next slide, we can see that basically, let's go, a, a, HR fell into a trap, okay? HR fell into a trap. And that trap is um, not being convinced of your own value. So the question is, you know, what card do you basically play? So if you're in legal, you can um, uh, play the price card or you can play the professionalism card <clears throat> or, or you can uh, play um, the relationships, relationships you have in the business community or in the legal community. Um, various people play various cards in their profession. HR basically started playing the business card because it wasn't and isn't convinced of its own value. So we started looking for value in places where there's no value. And, uh, what, and of course, uh, 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 no value as in what we call ourselves. So if you call yourself a, an HR business partner and you don't call yourself um, an HR person without, without the business uh, word in there, uh, you really need to provide value. And if you don't have the value, then you cover yourself with a fig leaf that's called business partnership. So there's a trap, and the trap is using a word which doesn't describe you. And the reason is you're not convinced of your value. And I want to go into what I see as HR's value in the rest of this presentation. So let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so first of all, when people organize, okay, when people organize, there is anxiety. Because I used to wake up in the morning and hunt and then cook the animal and, and then feed uh, food myself and uh, feed my family the animal. And all of a sudden, you know, you hunt and you cook and you do something else. So I'm, I'm dependent upon you. Or marketing is dependent on research and research is dependent on legal. Legal is dependent on finance. And the moment that you feel that you depend on someone and you're not do, you don't do everything yourself, there's lots of anxiety. So the act of organizing causes anxiety. And all forms of this anxiety at the personal level, at the team level, at the inter-team level, and at the organizational level, the anxiety and their derivative problems from the act of organizing is one of the areas where HR provides its value. So organizing and, you know, Mao Zedong said a revolution is not a tea party. Organizing is not a tea party. Organizing, <coughs> excuse me, has lots and lots of problems which are anxiety-based, okay? And you can see that in the politics and in the team building and, and in, the, in, the, in the blaming culture uh, that develops and cover your ass and millions of things. But HR deals with the anxiety which stems from organizing. That's number one. And business produces people problems. And people, not business, is the domain uh, of HR. So people come together and do business. I define a product, and you develop a product, and you service the product, and you install the product. Let's take that whole flow. That causes a lot of problems. Because what you define is that what you make, and what you make really doesn't work, and someone needs to fix it. The act of organizing causes problems. Okay, there is no perfect way of organizing. The problems that are defined on the way are people problems and finance problems and legal problems, 
but one of the buckets, okay, are people problems. And HR deals in the people problems which are inherent in the act of organizing. Okay, and that's very important to understand because one of the mistakes that you make if you're a business partner, if you, you go to an IT flow and you say, well, this is the way the business flows and this is the people flow. And what we need to do is to debug and produce perfect processes which support the flow of business. Well, I got news for you, okay, that there's no such thing as a perfect um, flow of business. And certainly you don't have uh, people interacting in a way which is very well definable by process. Um, quite the opposite. So uh, people basically bypass uh, the process or they're hurt by the process or they defend themselves from the process. So what I'm saying is people produce, a business produces problems and solving those problems is HR's domain. So if we look at the area of anxiety, the domain of anxiety, we say when people organize, there's anxiety. The anxiety expresses itself in trust and politics and poor teamwork. And there are a whole slew of other problems which are derivative of the business flow. And that underneath that, there's a bucket of people problems. The people problems fall into that bucket. Those are two big buckets that HR needs to say, this is where we bring value. You run the business and I focus on the derivative anxiety related issues and the problems which arise doing business. So that is the huge, huge area where HR can bring value. Now, the problem, of course, is that if you approach a CEO and you say, this is my area of expertise, he um, probably won't understand that all that well. And two, he's going to say, you know what? This is too complicated. This is far too complicated. Make it easier for me. And you can make it easier for him because it is complex. Now, a legal um, expert or a finance expert will go into great detail ensuring that his boss understands what's going on. Okay? Uh, far too often, the HR uh, person wants to please his boss. So what he does is he uses uh, or she uses um, oversimplifications and lots of buzzwords uh, including business partnership, um, and in the heat, in el calor de la noche, in the heat of the night, in the heat of pleasing the boss, we almost wish away our real value. Because if we talk to our boss about the anxieties, about the people problems, and where they stem from, that there, and we come clean that there are no perfect processes, and all of this. Um, process-driven HR um, really hides or obfuscates what the real issues are. That's a very tough message to give, but that's the message. That's the message. That's where the value is. That's where you get the bang for the buck. Okay? So <clears throat> that's one area. Let's go to the next slide. Next slide. So what I'm saying is, is assuming you don't want to be an HR business partner and be mistrusted by the people and uh, you know uh, looked uh, down by by the people who do deal in business what does hr need to do well it needs to follow the value and not follow the money the ceo could look for new business the, the finance people can finance it and the legal people can work around the legal problems hr needs to deal with the that with the value so look at that dog in the upper right hand corner Sniff out the value and find it. So I want to point out several areas where I see the value of HR uh, based on the previous slide, which is uh, anxiety and the business uh, producing uh, people problems. Okay, so num number one would be that an organization has an underlying dynamic. And that underlying dynamic is politics, it's uh, teamwork, it's... Um, uh, personalities it's um what goes uh it's what what the iceberg really looks like and not not the tip of the iceberg it's all of these things which it and all these ridiculous business processes 
cannot define. Okay, cannot define, can't get your hands around it because it's abstract. But that abstract underlying dynamic of people and the organization, HR is the domain master. And if you don't understand that domain, and if you don't understand the underlying dynamic, and if you don't understand how to fix the underlying dynamic, and it's not by process, you're going to call yourself a business partner. So that's number one. Number two, in, in organizations, especially in global organizations, people have hidden agendas. These hidden agendas can be power. It can be control of your own destiny. It can be um, promulgating a new technology. Okay? Uh, these hidden agendas, dealing with these hidden agendas, making these hidden agendas um, something which is on the table and under the table, Taking the political struggles which manifest themselves because of the hidden agendas and lessening those political struggles, that is the second domain of, um, of HR. And that's where the value is. Let's go to the next slide. <coughs> next slide. Yeah, OK. So uh, another, another um, thing we have to come clear on is that uh, many senior executives at the top don't understand people. And many people in HR really try and transfer the responsibility of, you know, HR should do this, but the managers need to take responsibility. And there's a big mistake here in, in one area that, in my mind, in the present configuration of organizations, if you've reached the top, you probably don't understand the people dynamic uh, all too well. That's why you've reached the top. Okay, in other words, it's almost as if you need to be weak in certain areas which HR um, understands by, by, um, by dint of your weakness or because of your strengths which stem from your weaknesses, you've made it all the way to the top. So, you know, no lawyer really tries to make uh, the CEO into a legal expert. And the finance people really want to share um, the tricks of the trade. Why does HR want to give responsibilities to the managers so quickly? I'm not saying that HR needs to do every line function, but if we are domain masters of the of the underlying dy dynamic, and if we have ways of lessening political struggles and dealing with trust issues and improving the, the uh, underlying uh, dynamic uh, by debugging it. Why do we need the people at the top basically to take responsibility? Because it's our responsibility. That's what, that's what HR is about. <clears throat> and to really uh, uh, sum this, where the value is to sum it up, HR is basically a center of knowledge about people issues. Okay, and um, it could be also a center of operation about people issues, but only if we don't cross dress as business partners, because the moment we start talking business, we're out of our area of, of, uh, of expertise, and that's where we can be hit hard. Okay, so um, if we have a weakness, just like a box, you have a weakness, you got to defend yourself. Okay. And one of the ways you defend yourself is, is you run the business. I don't run the business. I'm your people person. You run the business. I don't run it. Because the moment that I run it, I'm, you know, I'm at a weakness. Because the truth of the, of the matter is, HR is not a business partner. HR is a center of knowledge for dealing with people issues. And the people issues are people issues caused by organizing and doing business. Next slide. Next slide. So uh, one other area, of course, uh, where HR can create a lot of value is creating and fostering trust. Um, uh, I don't think that there's any rarer resource than trust in the modern day um, organization. People uh, don't know each other. They write each other emails and texts, and they don't really feel any sense of um, uh, a commitment to the other side. Everyone's afraid their job is going to be cut and axed away. And there's a lot of uh, mi mistrust 
<coughs> that goes on here. And of course, a lot of uh, tricks um, on how to uh, deal with this uh, in a very um, in a very superficial fashion. But I think that being a trust master is also a huge um, uh, um, area of, of value for um, for HR. Next slide. Okay, so what is to be done? Number one is become an expert. Okay, are you an expert in 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 anxiety driven issues? Um, in in uh, are you an expert in the people problems solved by organizing? Um, or basically, uh, are are uh, do you are you of the purchasing uh, mindset or a supply uh, supply chain uh, human expert? You know what is. Um, your expertise. And if you're not an expert in in people, well, become an expert in people. Okay, don't call, don't become don't call yourself a business partner. Now, out there, there are lots of models. Okay, how to do HR? Lots of lovely models how to do the HR. You know, there's a model for everything nowadays. But basically, HR is being pragmatic. It's knowing all the models and using a little bit here, a little bit there, doing what works, but being pragmatic. So it's knowing a lot and being pragmatic. The third thing to do is we need to understand that we don't drive the business. We have complementary value in the people domain so we can work with people who do business and support them on people issues. But we're not out there making business decisions with the business people. In other words, if we compare it to a boxing match, okay, we're in the corner, we're not in the ring in terms of doing business. And the more we want to get in the ring, the more we're going to have the you know what knocked out of us. We need to be in the corner, working with the people who do business, supporting the people who do business on people issues, but we ain't in the ring doing business. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. And of course, Basically, final slide is what we need to do is not only do what we've talked about, but avoid certain things. Number one, stop draw cross-dressing as a business partner to achieve acceptance because the people aren't going to accept you and management's not going to accept you. Number number two, things are very difficult. The challenges that I've spelt out in this webinar are extremely difficult. So you can't make them easier by sloganizing. And Gloria. My character basically has um, the slogan of the month issue uh, or, or, or slogan of the month um, uh, contest where she has uh, internet of, of things leading engagement by a head or by a, by a lap. But don't sloganize, stop, you know, stop sloganizing because what you do is you make complex problems easy, okay, but not solvable. So I can take lack of trust and say, we're going to have a wow, wow, wow trust campaign. What does that mean? You know, how long does it fit to take to fix trust? It probably takes between an, R, an engineering group and a sales group, maybe two years of hard work. You can't do it in a campaign or in a week or using a slogan. So the more you sloganize, the more you're going to look like a politician who promises something on Sunday and he's elected on Monday and he raises taxes. <clears throat> and I think that the final thing that uh, HR people need, need to avoid, my suspenders keep falling here, is to stop pleasing to gain short-term power. So go to your boss and you please him and you please him and you please him and you tell him what he wants to hear and you tell him it's going to take two weeks and everything, all the problems are going to go away and we're going to work um, on enhancing middle management's uh, capabilities and all the problems are going to disappear. And it ain't going to happen. Um, uh, uh, it's uh, a dealing with the issues that are on the table is a long, hard, uphill run. No quick fixes. So if you come to your boss and you with with an expertise in dealing with people problems which stem from from organizing, and you don't press as a business dress up as a business partner, and you don't sloganize, and you don't please. You create value. In my mind, we're going to go and move to to a far, um, far more meaningful relationship um, with 
uh, the people we deal with. Okay, one more slide. That's it, no more slides. Anyway, uh, so I'm done. Um, any questions? I think there's a technical problem here with the questions. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ellen. Uh, I'll get back to the to the slides uh, where when you answer some of the questions. We do have a, a, a few questions. And uh, we have one from Josep, and he is asking if HR does not take the victim position, i.e. death trap or damned position, what is the actual visualization of business partnerships that works well for both business and HR? Now, I think that there, there is, um, uh, so, so uh, uh, my answer to you, so the number one is um, HR uh, is not in a, is not a, a business partner. So when people do business, when people do business and HR says, I'm your business partner, they're victimizing themselves. So the question is, do you define your value with your boss so he can't victimize you? Part of being victimized is because you set yourself up as a business partner, but you're not. You're not a business partner. You know, it, 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 you're, so if you call yourself a business partner, you're going to be blamed for the business issues, but you're not a business partner. Okay, I'll give you an example. Someone comes to an HR manager and says, okay, we're going to move in. This is my business plan. And he gives a great business plan. But no one in the in organization, not not the structure, not the people, not the processing, doesn't support this new strategic idea. <clears throat> so in my mind, what an HR manager needs to do is tell his boss, boss, you know, this is a great, this is a great plan, but we don't have an organization that can do that. You want to build an organization which can do that? Fine. But that that's not a plan. You don't have a plan. What you have is a piece of paper. You don't have a plan. You want to build the plan? Let's build the plan. And not, okay, let's roll up our sleeves and do a middle management uh, course to align people with the new strategy. Far too often, HR victimizes itself by taking the wrong marching orders and working with middle management or on process definition. So the harder it is, you know, there's an expression in Hebrew, um, if you, which means if you sow your seeds, if you sow your seeds um, with, with tears, you will reap in joy. So the harder it is when you plant the seeds, the better your crop is going to be. But there are far too often, how does the victimization start? You promise the world and you deliver nothing. I hope that's an answer. That's great. Thank you. And um, when you were talking about um, uh, Gloria and, 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 <coughs> and your your blog and, and the wonderful, well, um, characters and um, um, actors we, we see in your blog. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, why you started it and how it matches the HR business partner actually discussion? Yeah, well, the way the way it started was this: is that I I just I couldn't believe um, I couldn't believe um, the questions I was being asked. And I remember one day someone called me at nine in the morning and says, "We're sending." three engineers to Japan, uh, can you come by sometime tomorrow and give a 30-minute talk on Japanese business culture? Well, I said, you know, I'll, what I'll do is uh, call me in an hour and, I'll, and we'll talk about it um, because I'm in a meeting now. And so I called back in an hour and the person says to me, we've already ordered another product. Now, I thought this was like candid camera or something. What is this? This is absolutely ridiculous. And it just had started happening more and more that I became or I came in contact with uh, a generation of HR managers who thought that part of their, uh, let's put it this way, part of their role as business partners was to order and commission OD products to solve the problems that their organization was having. Um, 
and um, you know, if, you know, what do you do if you run a business? You don't want projects. You want products. You make much more money. So people, they were ordering products from me. And I don't sell products. You know, I help solve problems. So I, I encountered a new generation of HR management, which was coming to me with demands, which I, I never understood. And at the beginning, you know, it was funny, and then it was sad, and then you get angry, and then I created Gloria. That's simple as that. Well, I know there's a, a lot of people that uh, love the 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 way it it, it gets. Um, Three thousand you know, people a day love reading it. 3,000 people a day, well, that, that's wonderful because everybody can see themselves into one of their characters at some point, especially from, you know, the, the HR professional perspective. Um, so I think that's a, that's well done and that's, that's, that's great. And um, we have a few more questions coming through from, um, there's a, a, a question, um, should HR business partners then rebrand themselves as HR experts? Yes. Absolutely. You know, there's invest and divest. If you're a business partner, if you call yourself a business partner, if you're late, I'll show you something. Let me, let me just show you something. Now look, is this a cat? Is this a cat? No, of course it's not a cat. It's a dog. So if by a mistake I call him a cat, I'd have to call, you know, come, come clear and say it's a dog. So if you're a business partner and you're, you're not a business partner, so clearly, redefine yourself. Like at this poor, you know, this pet of mine over here, where I just, I just bent over to the pet him. If he said, you know, I'm a cat, I said, no, no, you're a dog. So HR is not a business partner, and you should be experts. So the answer to that is yes. That's very clear, and thank you for your <laughs> very uh, great uh, creativity. And um, Jules is asking, uh, thank you, and he's thanking you for your presentation. So what would you say to those saying that business crea creates HR needs? And if businesses create HR needs, what's the difference between being a business partner and understanding the business from an HR point of view? Yeah, well, so... Yeah, I, I knew I was going to be asked that question. Okay, so um, I, I'm, I'll, let me answer. Let me answer it uh, uh, this way. Let's say, let's say that um, uh, you are a uh, legal expert. Okay, let's take a, a metaphor. You're a legal expert in sexual harassment. Okay, that's that's uh, and. You can be in software, or you can be in hardware, or you can be in whatever. And yeah, you need to understand it. But you know, harassment is harassment. And so, yes, do we need to understand the business? Yes, of course, we need to understand the business, and we need to understand the flow of the business, and we need to understand the interfaces, and we need to understand um, the distinctive characteristics of the business. But what we need to understand is that all businesses have people problems and they an organizing creates anxiety in all businesses and IT processes which are supposed to predict human behavior don't predict human behavior so yes we need to understand the domain yes we able we need face validity but it's been very much um, overvalued what we need to understand Okay, if the act of organizing causes trust issues and politics and poor teamwork, where do we see it here? We don't need to understand the very uh, every single line of the spreadsheet. We need to be able to talk the talk so that we're understood and not seen as a bunch of weirdos. But let's not overplay the value of, of sitting in the management meeting like Gloria does with her seat at the table and talking about is business issues. No, sit at the table and talk people issues. Thank you, Ellen. And um, there are some other questions. There might be some other questions coming <coughs> through. So um, here's one from, from my aspect. Um, I uh, have always uh, taken a little bit of a, of a rebel uh, perspective from from, no. from HR perspective. Really? Yes, truly. Really? Yes, truly. Oh, and I've never really cared for the the HR business partner and all the 
<laughs> the wonderful guru, uh, guru, uh, wonderful guru setups and the models. Because um, from an uh, emerging markets perspective, it never actually worked because you have to start from back to basic. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice? And I know there's a lot of listeners as well from uh, the Middle East and Africa that are um, in, in setup mode in where they actually have to set up their, their, their HR function. So what would that be instead of taking the HR business partner role, you know, um, the strategy, you know, the, the centers of excellence, what, what else can they do? Yeah, well, I think that's a very good question. So let's take uh, El Sharq al Awsat, the Middle East. Okay, so uh, clearly HR um, and a lot of the models in HR are very uh, much built on Western um, assumptions um, about the way people should manage. You should you should have participatory democracy. You should have openness. You should have um uh, uh disagree and commit etc cetera, etc cetera. so all these all this um part od part hr types of assumptions about how people behave in organizations and the truth of the matter is very little of that is valid in the middle east or in asia where i work both in the middle east and in asia so i think part of it part of being an hr business partner in the middle east and in asia is not to swallow the western um terms lock stock and barrel because there's a lot of if we talk the software metaphor a lot of application needs to be done so that the core knowledge okay so that the core knowledge uh um uh, is is not lost i'll give you an example if we have a corporate hr function which says this month we are having a uh performance appraisals. Now, all of us know that many, and part of the performance appraisals is what I think about you as a manager, for example. We know that many places in the world, that's nonsense. It's not going to work. What we need to do is fight as hard as we can to ensure that we're not asked to be the running dog of corporate, ramming people's, uh, other people's values down our local staff's throat. Because if I'm sitting in Bangkok, or I'm I'm sitting in uh, in uh, in Cairo, or I'm sitting in in Qatar, or I'm sitting in Tel Aviv, and I start saying, okay, let's take these values which were based in Boston, and open your mouth, come on, go start. Oh, that doesn't work. So part of part of being an HR uh, person is not to buy in the in in, in the in uh, in the Middle East and in Asia is not to to to, to see yourself as what the Chinese call a running dog of corporate. Your job is to not only take what corporate gives you, but to feed back into corporates that, that the way of doing business, the way of managing, it needs to be adapted to local needs. So, so um, HR in these remote areas is not a only a representative of you know Chicago or Montreal-based uh, uh, HQ where we have to. Uh, uh, shove our values down our staff's throat, but basically it's serving as the voice of the local needs to ensure that the corporate addresses these local needs. Thank you Thank for you that, for and, and I know that'd be very uh, yeah. helpful for, for many people. So, um, so um, we have another question. Um, so somebody's agreeing that HR is being eaten away. It's also, it's also being outsourced, being outsourced and, diminished and diminished to a call center, call center type, type advice center. Advice. Do you have a view on that? Yeah, uh, that is, um, uh, you know, when uh, when President Lincoln was assassinated, okay, John Wilkes Booth, who was the assassin, jumped off the stage and yelled, sick semper tyrannis. Well, that means this is what happens to traitors he broke his leg and then he was a rank broke his ankle and he was caught so if you want to be a business partner okay and you want to uh, make work efficient and you want to downsize and you want to be the axe man and you want to be a, I, want, I want everything to be in processes ba, 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 in the end you will become a call center simple as that it's like you're going to work in the sex industry you're going to get a disease very simple okay that's it 
Because <coughs> you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business. So if you're going to, you know, uh, if you're sad enough or unfortunate enough to, to be a sex worker, you're going to get sick one day or the other, or it's either sick or, or beaten up or killed or whatever. But if you become a business partner, you will become a call center. Simple as that. Or maybe less than a call center. Maybe voicemail. You know, for call, if for uh, uh, for uh, uh, downsizing, press one. For recruitment, press two. For this, press. You're going to be a voicemail. That's what happens. That's the trap. The trap is you become a call center. And if you're on the way to becoming a call center, you're at the end of the career. Because in the end, you're going to have a bunch of IT people saying your competency can be reduced to a process. And it can't. It can't be reduced to a process. But because you've sold the myth, that's what you become. You become a call center. That's very oh, uh, fighting words, Nicole. Aren't they fighting words? Oh, so rebel, so rebel, Ellen. I, I, uh, I. Uh, um, there's already some some anticipation about Gloria's reaction. So uh, <laughs> we're looking forward to, to seeing that on uh, on uh, Twitter uh, going uh, going bananas. Well, thank you so much, and I, I do want to uh, thank you so much for your for your time. Um, and um, I'll just share your details again, so everybody can actually um, see those. And especially if there are people listening to me from other places in the Middle East, um, I would love to hear from you. Ahlan sahlan. That's great. And if you could um, share uh, your your contact details again in person. They're on the slide. You can see them on the slide. It's on slide two. Okay. And I have the, the, the slide now open. So um, what um, is your last giveaway to, to our, our viewers and our listeners from around the world? I would say my last giveaway is rebrand yourself. Rebrand yourself. Don't be afraid of re everyone rebrands. You know, training became talent management, and this became this and this. Became. You can perfume the pig. So rebrand yourself, okay? And as you rebrand yourself, um, re redesign, redesign um, the code. Redesign the code and rebrand yourself because the business partnership is barking up the wrong tree. You can't do it. Thank you. Annette. Don't 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 manage the risk. Get out of the business. Just get out. You know, you saw my dog before. Okay. So he taught me a lesson. I like to walk him four times a day, four times a day, um, for a kilometer. So he does four kilometers a day. Now today is 125 degrees in Tel Aviv. So we went outside and two trees and he came home. That's it. Get out of the business. Get out. He said, bring me home. You're an HR business partner. Get out of that business. Otherwise, you're going to become a call center. And someone in Albania who's learning English is going to say, hello, just a minute, hold on until I learn English. Not going to happen. Thank you for being so honest, Ellen. And I'm so happy. I, I truly, it's, it's, it's such a weight of my, my heart because it has been for, for, for many years is that there needs to be a totally creative and direct way in, in moving HR forward. And... I well, I know think. it wasn't direct enough, for Nicole. I know that, but and I and I'm sorry in advance for being so politically correct. <laughs> we have another discussion on that another <laughs> another day. But I'm pretty sure with the comments coming through that uh, we might be asking Gloria to 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 come uh, for a webinar as well over the coming months. I think that'd be wonderful as well. <laughs> So thank you so much. I uh, truly appreciate your time. And thank you all uh, listeners and viewers. And there's a lot going on. So definitely check your uh, Twitter, Alan, and uh, everybody who else is on Twitter. There's a lot going on on, on, on there as well uh, between Alan and, and, and Gloria and new to hr So again, thank you very much. Listen to uh, uh, new to hrs uh, webinars over the next months. Uh, we have a lot in store for you. And uh, I look forward to hearing and seeing you all.